for chronic stable COPD, not with an exacerbation present. In several meta-analyses, it has been found that only 10% of patients have a significant steroid response, defined as a 20% or more improvement in the FEV1. A review by the Cochrane Collaboration found no evidence of benefit for low doses and significant short-term benefits only for high-dose steroids offset by an increased risk of complications. In addition, there are a number of serious possible side effects from long-term steroids. These include osteoporosis and compression fractures, weight gain, insomnia, edema, worse glucose control, infections, high blood pressure, among many others. However, uh, having said that, uh, the answer can be a little bit more complicated. We recognize, for example, that there is a great overlap in many patients between asthma and COPD, and we also recognize that corticosteroids are effective in asthma. This overlap syndrome has actually uh, gained a tremendous amount of attention in recent years in the research literature. And indeed, if one does have asthma as a child, young adult, starts to smoke cigarettes, develops COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, it's very likely that the end result in your 50s and 60s beyond is that you probably have elements of both. And in those circumstances, we always try to give inhaled corticosteroids because these obviously are much safer, but sometimes, especially during exacerbations or more chronically, uh, oral corticosteroids may be necessary in this overlap syndrome. So bottom line, no, pure COPD, corticosteroids are not indicated. As a matter of fact, outcomes can be poor uh, with, uh, with oral corticosteroids for COPD. Uh, bottom line, if indeed there is an asthmatic component, one has to use your judgment, but sometimes uh, oral corticosteroids can be effective if you have this overlap, the asthma and COPD syndrome. Many so-called steroid-dependent COPD patients are not on optimal treatment with inhaled and less toxic therapies. In my practice, I always optimize the use of inhaled therapies first, since that is a safer approach and is often very effective.